Hello community! In one of my last videos called New AI Code Intro to the Latest Vision Transformers, I showed you here the original scientific paper that was about Vision Transformers by Google, and then I jumped with you into archive preprints, other preprints where we investigated here Vision Transformers. I went to the Hugging Face library where I showed you all the different vision models that are available, and finally, we had a look at the latest preprints that are based in January 2023 on image classification and what we can learn from this. And there was another video I called Vision Transformers Medical Image Classification for Cancer Screening that we had a look at a scientific publication where we looked at the difference between CNNs with their locality and their translation equivariance, and we checked against the transformer architecture and what are the benefits if you compare it between CNN and vision technology. Great. So these were the two videos I had before, and they focused especially here on the application of vision transformers. Now, a lot of you ask me, hey, this is great, but what about code some vision transformers with us? So welcome today. We are going to code this. I have my runtime as I know. And here we go. And as I showed you, the first, of course, here is we install our transformers and we install our data sets. And you're not going to believe it. Afterwards, we do the configuration of our vision transformer model. So at first, we download from Hugging Face Transformers our config file and our model. And as you can see, it is very easy. Whenever you say configuration is config and you leave it even open, you have a default style configuration for your specific vision transformer. Then you can say you initialize the model with some random weights, of course, for a specific configuration. And then you can say, hey, great. But what have we achieved? So let's look in detail what we have. We do have a configuration of the system. So here we are with our configuration. You can see here what we have. The most important, the number of hidden layers, the patch size, the number of channels, RGB, red, green, and blue, the number of attention heads, the model type, of course, is vision transformer. And then you have, of course, your standard parameters. Now, if we look now at the model, you see that we have here now the complete model architecture. So layer by layer, we can have a look at this. This is here the input layer, if you want, where we have our vision transformer patch embeddings. Those are the little snippets that have been transformed from our original image. And then we start now with our layer building. And since we have here the classical 12 layer structure of an encoder stack, we have here the first layer and we have the self attention and then comes the second layer with all the details and you're not going to believe it but we end up with 12 layers from 0 to 11 where we build our architecture and then as you can see here if we come out of the standard form we do have a pooler pooling layer where we have a linear layer plus a nonlinear activation function. In our case, it's tongue and superbolicus. So this is the model that we have. So great. Now let's look at a particular image. We just load an image and here is the image that we loaded. A very classical image of two cats. Our task here is image classification. It is not detect an object within an image. This would be something else. It is not about a segmentation of an image that you show me where's the first cat, where's the second cat, where's the TV remote. No, this is an image classification task. And just wrote here, it's a transformer encoder model like BERT is, our vision transformer. And of course, it is pre-trained on a large collection of images in a supervised fashion. And we have here the classical image net data set with 20 1000 models. If you are not sure what this is, I have here a link to Hugging Face and we'll check this out in a second. 
You know that images are presented to the model as a sequence of fixed size patches with a resolution of 16 times 16 pixel. We have a linear embedded model. We have, of course, a specific uh, vision token for the beginning of a sequence, especially if you do the fine tuning of a, on a classification task. We have an absolute position embedding because we have to put the image together and there are some dependencies. But let's just jump into right into it and download from Hugging Face a specific pre-trained model. And you see here we have here an image processor and finally our vision transformer model from pre-trained. And this is a model that Google provides, vision transformer, the base model with 12 layer. The patch size is 16 times 16 pixels. The image size is 224 pixels times 224 pixels. And it has been pre-trained on a specific data set. So if we download this, you will see we have a model ready for us. This model here, since it's only a base model, is just about 350 megabytes. So great. We have a model operational for us. Just to give you a word of warning, always, please really always check here if you're not familiar with the databases or with the models in Hugging Face here, the model card. It tells you exactly what happened. So here we have Google VAT base patch 16224. And it tells us it's a vision transformer model pre-trained on the ImageNet with 14 million images. So we are above our critical minimum size for a pre-trained image data set. We have 21K classes, therefore 21K. Resolution is 224 times 224 pixels. And this is it. You have here a model description, what it's doing, pre-training. Yes, 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 beautiful. But just check what you just downloaded so that you are sure that you download the right model. And as I showed you here, our image processor. I received a question, what does the image processor do? So here is the class definition of a vision transformer image processor. You can do resize, where you resize the image height and width dimension to the specified dimensions. You have here the size, what is classical hour 224 pixels. This is the size of the output image after resizing. You have a rescaling, whether to rescale the image by a specified scale or rescale factor. And you see all the different parameters you can modify here to prepare the image for the model. So this was our image processor. And now for the model, we download here a pre-trained model. And we apply it and we say, beautiful. My input is of course here, the image of the two cats. And let's run the model so that we generate some outputs of the model. Yeah, by pre-training the model, it learns an inner representation of images of our 14 million images that can then be used to extract features useful for some downstream tasks. If you have then a data set of labeled images, you can train a standard classifier. In our fine tuning, we have a classification head by placing a linear layer on top of the pre-trained encoder stack. Great. So we say we have here generated an output. Let's look at the output and understand what is part of the output. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so here we go. At first you see, we have a base model output with pooling. So it's just the base model, the pre-trained model, and you have a pooling of the last hidden state of our activations. So really of the last layer, the last hidden state gives you a tensor. This is the tensor you get. And you get a pooler output. This is another tensor you would get. Beautiful. And if we say now output dot last hidden state, we get now the form of this tensor. And as you can see here, if you look at the size, the final size, we have now a 768 dimensional vector representation that happened to our images. Yes, you can have a look at the tensor that comes out really, but this is just a typical tensor. Let me show you that we have here 
indeed a tensor beautiful tensor here we go so you might say great but hey i thought we are working with pre-trains model why can't we predict here now a verbal result of an output class let's say hey this is these are two cats well this is easy because you have to be careful and you have to watch out for the model let's have a look at two models here I have here a model description and here a model identifier. Now, you can see they're both identical except here, no, here, this what I call CCC, here is an additional term. But be careful because the first model, we have a vision transformer model that is pre-trained on the 14 million images. And then additionally with a fine-tuned head, fine-tuned to ImageNet 2012, which has only 1 million images with only 1,000 semantic classes. The other model, as that's the model we just used, is a vision transformer model that is pre-trained on the 14 million images. Full stop. There was no fine tuning. And this is exactly the reason why when we have an output, we have a tensor output, because we have not defined for what task we want to use the model. If we say we want to have now a fine-tuning, a downstream task that is fine-tuned, so we have a classification head because we want to have an image classification on this image as a cat, we have now to use the model that has been fine-tuned. So let's do this. Again, we choose the same picture somewhere else. Here are two little cats. And then we do exactly the same as we did before. We have our feature extractor, but now we have the other model that I just showed you. We choose here now this model that is fine-tuned already. And we go outputs, and then we look at the outputs. And now you will see that the output is differently because we use now a pre-trained and fine-tuned model on our vision transformers. So let's have a look at the output. Take some seconds. And here we are. I have now suddenly an image classifier output, you see? And we have now a tensor. And you might say, okay, great, and what else we have? No, nothing, this is our tensor. This is the result. And if we say now, okay, let's take the logits, and let's say what is the predicted class, we receive an answer, the predicted class, the image classification, is an Egyptian cat. So, successful task. You may say, hey, great. So, let's have a look at the model again. And you will see we have some new information now available in this model. Let's start at the very beginning. We have, again, this is our vision transformer config file. We have now a vision transformer for image classification. So we have a defined downstream task that is already fine-tuned. Now you have your attention dropout, you have your activation function, you have your hidden size that I mentioned. And then, and this is the interesting thing, you have an ID to label. So this tells you we have here an integer and it gives me now the label classification, tiger shark, for example, or hammerhead or whatever. And you're not going to believe it, we have the exact opposite. We have 1,000 classes. As I showed you, it has been trained on 1,000 classes. So we should have exactly 999. Beautiful. There it is. Then we have the image size with 224 pixels times 224 pixels. And then we have the exact opposite. Now we have label to ID. And this is now that we have the description of the class, Afghan hand, and the integer. 160 for example and now you understand our command that we had here we had model configuration is exactly what we requested here and then id to label and we have here the class and so this is how we construct our answer from a pre-trained and fine-tuned vision transformer model beautiful now you know how to operate those things but let's have a little bit fun at first okay yeah what i wanted to show you of course, also on Hugging Face, you have here the description of this specific model. You see here our vision transformer, and it goes, 
It's a vision transformer model pre-trained on our 14 million images and fine-tuned on 1 million images with 1K classes at the resolution 224. Beautiful. Then you have here a detailed intent and use, how to use everything you need for your coding. So let's go back here. If you want to see now all the models that are already pre-trained and or fine-tuned for you, we go to Hugging Face, we go to Models, I put here Google slash VIT, Vision Transformer, and you see we get 14 models. And those 14 models are pre-trained and or fine-tuned for you by Google. And you see we have here the base model with 12 layers, but we also have here the large model and base and large exactly the same dimension like in our BERT model, because we both have a specific number of transformer blocks in this model, so VIT large here. We have sometimes a patch size that is bigger, as you can see here, we go from patch size 16 pixels times 16 pixels to 23 times 23 pixels, and even the image size now goes from 224 to 384 pixels. But if you look, there's also some huge, so like BERT huge, so this is a really deep model. We have a patch size of 14, so we really reduce the patch size. But as you can see here, this model, for example, is just a pre-trained model. So this is huge, large pitch, and whenever you, you just can click, by the way, let's go to the large one, and you see this is pre-trained and fine-tuned. Beautiful with this specific characteristic. So always check when you use a model that you are absolutely sure what to use. So beautiful, and since you made it here to the end of this video, welcome. Uh, in my next video, we will discover that pre-training our vision transformer models in pure data sets is not the most efficient methods. And there is something that we call dino. And yes, in my next video, we will have some dinos walking around. And of course, the scientific topic is self-supervised vision transformers. But to give you a bonus material, just wanted to show you how easy it is to use this model. And here we go. There is Gradio. I don't know if you are familiar with this. You just can install it very easily. It just downloads everything. And then what we take is, we take now our exactly our hugging face model that we just used here, and we load it in the Gradio interface. And as you can see, it fetches the model. Okay, duck PNG. Oh, wait a second. I just have to load here my example file here. As you can see, I have now duck PNG here. <laughs> So let's run this command again. So we fetch the model from Hugging Face. As you can see, we have that a call-up notebook is detected. And now you have two options. With Gradio, and this is the nice thing, you have either within your call-up notebook, you can now have here your dragon image here in your call-up notebook. This is my little duckling. You say submit, and the system tries an object identification, no, it is an image classification, careful, of our image. And it tells you to 90% probability this is a goose. Beautiful. Of course, you can take another image, for example, here, a pyramid. And then you see that because we are only have 1,000 verbal classes, visibly, a pyramid was not in 1,000 visual uh, classes. So we have here the next best thing. The next best thing, just 10% probability, says it's an obelisk or megalith with 3%. So you see, it depends here on your fine tuning data set where you have the image and the written down classification of this image. Now, let me show you the limitations that we have here. Now, let me show you something else. Of course, we you can do it in a code notebook, but we have here, of course, a live link. So let's go here to the live link. You can send this link to a friend, wherever, just valid 72 hours, remember? So let's take here this girl with some lights. 
And you might say, okay, a little bit bigger, maybe. Here we go. And now let's see if the system is able to do an image classification task. And you see, we're currently working already five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. It's trying to do an object classification. And what we came up with is interesting. The first is candle. Yes, it's a light source. So candle is not bad. Second, interestingly, is ping pong ball. Now, if you look here at the bright spots where we have here, it could be interpreted as some ping pong pole, balls. <laughs> Spotlight is number three, just with 3% torch, torch light with 3%. So you see, it did not uh, achieve to identify the face here of this woman, but it focused here on those important parts of the image. And this will be done in my next video. I show you where the image is looking at to identify for a classification. We will look exactly at the attention heads in an image so you can see what the image is analyzing when it gives you a classification answer. So you see, these are the limitations, but they introduce us to the next video. This is beautiful. But even if you take now some synthetic images I generated here, this image example, it tries now to find an, an, a similarity in the 1000 classes it was trained on, fine-tuned on, and you see with 68% it goes as an hourglass. Now if you look at the form hourglass, yeah, there's something to it here with the sand. Okay, yeah, loudspeaker, well, yeah. So this is easy to play around. And here, for example, my volcano image, this is quite clear what it is. We say submit. And you see less than two seconds, we have volcano 100%. Everything else is zero. But even the zero one are interesting because you have either a geyser, you have lakeside, you have seashore. So not so far off if you think about the semantic content of the description of this photo. So this is an interesting way. You can try it out yourself. Just take your pictures, move your pictures in here, just press submit and the system, this pre-trained and fine-tuned system with 1000 classes gives you an answer that lies of course within its 1000 classes. So if you want to train it now, if you want to fine-tune it now on 10,000 classes, on 100,000 classes, we have to code the fine-tuning will also be part of my next video. Or if you go really crazy, we can also do the pre-training and then the fine-tuning to our very specific needs, like I showed you in my last videos on the BERT, on the NLP encoder stack. And here we have a vision encoder stack. So the methodology is very similar. But this is it for this video. I say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you try out this very easy radio demonstration. And I see you in my next video.